télé. Je crois qu'il a perdu l'espoir. Tout le monde s'en fiche de l'espoir. Pas moi Et Sidi non plus Alors, il faut que tu le retrouves et que tu lui ramènes. Mais comment Je sens toujours le parfum des fleurs. J'entends les bruits. Je vois les couleurs. Si on n'a aucune idée de son passé, ni de l'endroit d'où l'on vient, alors qu'est-ce qu'on est Wardi. I was living in the camp of uh, Burj Barajna in Beirut uh, for one year. I was working in the kindergarten. The idea for the project came as I wanted to tell the story about my friends in the camp. I wanted to have a story where I showed, you know, the you know, intelligence, how warm they were, how open they were, and how kind of they shared their life with me. I was interested in, you know, the contrast between what I found, you know, really great guys that and girls that managed somehow to, you know, to, to, uh, to lead a life that was nice. You know, they, they laugh. It's not like depressing and, and sad, everything. But the contrast between managing to find ways to, to live a life, the contrast between this and, you know, the living in a very difficult situation and having this very, very dark past, how they manage to, to kind of still find this hope and light in, in their lives. This was my initial interest and what I wanted to show. And we made like a, a regular documentary with a friend of mine from Australia. So it's uh, out of place, out of time. It's on YouTube by German Pictures. So he finished that film, my friend. And, but I wanted, I had already finished my animation studies. So I wanted to, you know, use the stories for animation. My challenge was how how am I going to use this material and make it into an animation film? So that was, and that process took took some time. We started in, I lived in the camp in 2001, and we started really the process in 2010, but using the same interviews, and then I got some more interviews done, and I was doing more historical research for the flashbacks in the film, and then in 2018 it was finished. It's not Spider-Man, it's, it's a political film, feature length, animation, stop motion and 2D. So, I mean, it took us quite some time to get it financed. <laughs> so that was a, you know, a big struggle. She's a mix of different, different girls, different kids in the camp. But first of all, her story and her relation to her great grandfather started with my friend um, Hanan, who's my age. And she was telling me about her when she was a kid and her relationship with her grandfather and how he taught her about the plants and the names and how to take care of them and the connection to the land in Palestine. So that's really how the, you know, her story started was with these stories. And then the inspiration I found from different like young girls. And I, I also have three children myself who are six, nine, and my oldest is 12 years old. In animation, it's a lot about its practicality. It's like, you know, you have to find the ways that work. So choosing the 2D for the flashbacks, we thought that, okay, we're gonna have scenes of Beirut downtown from the 70s with a lot of people. We thought, okay, with drawings, it's easier. You know, we don't have to make 20 puppets to fill a scene. It would be too expensive and it would take too much time. So in the beginning, it was kind of, okay, practical, way of getting the film made. We wanted the, the flashbacks to be also like historic um, dives into the psyche of people and you know with drawings that you can have this fluidity of, of, of the drawings that you can make it more a uh, psychological journey. The drawings gives you this opportunity which puppets maybe doesn't in the same way. We chose the puppets because the tactility you know, the material that this feels real. It's the real world. This works perfect for representing reality. First, I worked, you know, we work in drawings. So it was me and uh, the art director for the film, Rui Tenreiro. Since the film is in puppets and 2D, so we needed to find a visual language, something that connected the two worlds. So it felt like one movie. So the distinct eyes and the distinct nose and the distinct um, lips. lips and also the shapes of the heads 
uh, were things that we okay we felt this has to be distinct so that people make the connection even if it's in two different uh, mediums oh, techniques Rui has uh, his uh, illustration he does illustrations and cartoons and it's a little bit like how the camp is it's ugly beautiful it's uh, so I guess something of his style that you know we we took and put it into the puppets the puppets are beautiful but you know there's something strange about them that i liked and that's off and it's also about the the sets uh, between the camp and the graphism graphism of the you know Rui has a very uh, straight lines it's very uh, the uses ink dark dark lines so that's also reproduced in in this world so it's uh, like 2D elements in, in the puppet world that bridge the two techniques. So that, you know, sometimes bricks are just drawn on the wall and that's the link between the worlds. For me, one of the biggest challenges was in the writing process because it's uh, 70 years of quite traumatic experiences and you want to make something that feels right to the people that are living in the camps. So it took me a lot of time to to write, to research, and then to discuss the script with Palestinian friends in Lebanon and in Norway and Sweden. I really wanted to make something that was felt true to people that come from the camp and that live in the camps. I'm still in touch with many of my friends. And also the, the film has, you know, I've gone back to the camp and with the film or, you know, discussing the film, recording sounds in the camp and doing more research material. So the film has also led me, you know, enabled me to go back uh, many times. We dubbed the film to Arabic uh, in the fall and hopefully this spring we will show it in the camps. That's the, the dream.